They call it the HP Spectre X360. Now this is the 14 inch model. It's a two in one laptop and it comes with a 3K OLED screen, making it great for digital artists, graphic designers, and photographers. It is so sharp, it's so clear. The darks are dark, the colors are bright, and the color accuracy is phenomenal on this laptop. As you can see the results coming up on the screen, it's got great screen brightness, it has great color accuracy and color gamut range all built into this insanely beautiful 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. It almost looks like they just attached an iPad to a keyboard deck. And this thing is razor thin and light. I mean, it's just insane looking at how thin this laptop is. Now I'll go ahead and close it so you can actually see the full thickness and weight coming up on the screen for when it's closed. Uh, but it just is such a nice laptop. This is a great improvement over last year's build. I mean, last year's build was great but this feels even better in my hands. I love the very rounded edges on the chassis. If you actually look at the keyboard deck, it kind of falls off. And so when you're holding uh, this in your hands, or excuse me, should I say when it's laying on the desk and you're resting your hands on it, it's very comfortable. There's no sharp edges that kind of push into your arms or your hands. Um, so there's just a few of those neat design changes that really make this laptop stand out and the quality pick up even more. As I've been using it over the past week or two, it's just been so comfortable. Another reason I think this laptop stands out for creative professionals is the large glass trackpad. I mean, this is one of the biggest trackpads I've seen on a 14 inch laptop. Now compare it to something like this Lenovo Yoga 9i, it just dwarfs the trackpad comparatively. So that is a big benefit for the on-the-go creator. And speaking of on-the-go, we'll talk about the battery life here in just a minute. Now the keyboard is very, I would say classic. It's got these nice square keys, no rounded edges, no bevel in the middle, just a very simple key. It has a medium key press, very quiet. I really like the key press. And you have a full-size shift key, which always makes me happy, and your smaller arrow keys, as well as a fingerprint reader for quick access uh, to log into your laptop. Now, for a quick audio sample to hear what the keyboard and trackpad sounds like, here it is for you. Now, as always, I also like to give an audio sample of the speakers, and here's that test as well. And then lastly, this does come with a webcam, and here's a quick sample of me using the webcam so you can see how that looks. This is the webcam on the HP Spectre X360 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. So Lenovo sent over these three Lenovo Legion 5 Pros, and as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers, we're gonna kick off a giveaway to celebrate passing the 100,000 subscriber mark. The faster we get there, the sooner the giveaway is coming your way. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, share this video, and drop a comment of how you would use a Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Now, as far as connectivity is concerned, I wasn't necessarily stoked. I will say one thing I liked is you have this little flip out tab here, uh, which I thought was really cool. So it kind of hides that USB type A. That's the only port on the left side of the chassis. And as you come to the right side, you have a USB type C and a micro SD card slot. Now also kind of hidden on this laptop, you have a USB type C here and a headphone jack here. I think it's kind of a neat little touch to hide these away in these little beveled edges. Now, as I mentioned in my unboxing, they no longer do the beveled edges or the cut edges on all sides. It's only at the back. While when opening the laptop, you have this really neat shape here, kind of pointing your eye in towards the center as little arrows. And it's just a nice design element. I think it really is tasteful. As promised, the battery life is really good on this laptop. You get about 11 hours of battery life for productivity and about 13 hours of battery life when you're streaming video, let's say on YouTube or Netflix, whatever you might be doing. Now, for creators, the Photoshop battery life was really solid as well. You got about five hours of Photoshop battery life. For video editing, I run playback inside of Premiere Pro on 4K, loop continuously until the battery goes dead. And then for the Photoshop battery life test, I run the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on RIP 
repeat until the battery goes dead. And that's how those tests are conducted. So it's a very heavy stress test. I think you could even get more battery life, but I like to push the laptop to the limits when using those softwares. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the performance. Now, when I first saw that this laptop came with the i7-1255U compared to the i7-1260P, I was a little nervous. I had historically not been a huge fan of the U series processors from Intel, been a huge fan of the G series and now the latest P series. I was a little hesitant on the U series, but as I got into the benchmarks, I saw that it was still a great choice from HP to go with that U series processor. As you can see at Geekbench, it has great single core performance. So if you're somebody who wants a lot of performance inside of singular apps, let's say you're a big Photoshop user or maybe Adobe InDesign or Adobe Illustrator, having single core performance will give you good performance inside of those programs. But as we move to multi-core, this was not the best multi-core processor. As you can see, the i7-1260P processors are coming up in above this laptop. So if you're form of a multitasker. Let's say you have Spotify, Google Chrome, Adobe InDesign, and Adobe Photoshop open all at the same time. You might have a slight advantage going with an i7-1260P processor over this i7-1255U. However, I don't think it's going to be a massive difference since these are still great scores, but just comparing apples to apples, 12th gen to 12th gen, that's the results we're seeing here. Now, as we move on to Cinebench R23, again, we see great single core performance, and then it drops down the list on multi-core performance just like it did on Geekbench. But as we move the laptop into the Photoshop benchmark, you can see that it has great performance inside of Photoshop, scoring almost a 700 in the Photoshop benchmark, beating out a few of the i7-1260P laptops that I've reviewed on my channel. So again, showing that the single core performance is great on this processor, but that multi-core performance is just slightly uh, inferior compared to the 1260P. So honest reviews here, just trying to give you all the info that you need. Now, as we move into video editing, you can see the playback for 1080p. You have zero drop frames at full quality playback, so this will make a great 1080p video editing laptop. And at full quality playback for 4K, we only have 313 drop frames. So whether you're using 1080p or 4K for the drop frame test, it handled it very well. So the playback will be smooth. Now, if you wanted to consider doing 6K B-RAW, you can see here on the test, I actually put that at half quality and it got 3,000 drop frames. So it is possible to edit 6K B-RAW. I wouldn't recommend it. It may be laggy when you start adding more clips and motion graphics and music to your timeline, but it is possible, which is really cool to see. Now, as we move on to the 4K export time out of Premiere Pro, you can see that it has a six minutes and 30 second export time Good export time, nothing fantabulous. I wasn't blown away, but for a mobile CPU, this is a really good export time. If you're somebody who's looking for better export times or better performance for video editing, I recommend adding in a laptop with a dedicated GPU into maybe your decision-making process. I've made plenty of videos about why you would choose you know, a thin and light mobile laptop over a gaming laptop, or maybe like a creator-focused laptop with an H-series processor and dedicated GPU. So definitely check out those videos if you're interested, they'll be over on my channel. But in regards to thin and light, great battery life and great performance, this thing hits the nail on the head for the variety of things you might be going for. Overall, my top recommendation for this laptop would be the photographer, digital artist, or graphic designer looking for a great on-the-go laptop with a super color accurate screen in a thin and light package with solid battery life. If you're somebody who occasionally does some light video editing, 1080p and 4K, this would be a great laptop for you as well if you're adding those skill sets to being a graphic designer, photographer, or digital artist. But if you're somebody who's more of a serious video editor, I would definitely look for a laptop with a dedicated GPU. If you're curious about the exact live pricing or availability of this laptop, or if you're ready to make a purchase, links will be in the description below. Otherwise, likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.